In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's report today does come from the book of Daniel. We're continuing our we're continuing our series on that. And by the way, speaking of biblical things, I will be uh, preaching at the Midway Church of Christ up in near Decatur, Alabama. It's actually in Trinity, Alabama, and that will be happening Wednesday. So look for some updates with that. But we're going to go ahead and get into the book of Daniel today, in chapter nine, and. Uh, this is in the middle of one of Daniel's prayers to God about the plight of Israel. And remember that at the time of Daniel, Israel is in captivity. The reason that Daniel is where he is while he's writing the book of Daniel is because he is one of the people that was taken away to Babylon. And even though this prayer presumably is after the fall of Babylon where the Medes and the Persians have taken over, Israel has still not returned home. Israel is still being held against their will and is still not the, the master of their own dominion. They still do not have free reign and they are not a free people at this point. And Daniel gives a prayer partly in lamentation over the plight of Israel, and that comes from Daniel 9, 7 through 8. Righteousness belongs to you, O Lord, but to us, open shame, as it is this day to the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those who are nearby and those who are far away in all the countries to which you have driven them, because of their unfaithful deeds which they have committed against you. Open shame belongs to us, O Lord, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. Now, in this particular passage, you can see Daniel's understanding, and we talked about this the last time we discussed this in a chaplain's report. Daniel has an amazing amount of perspective on this. He understands that the reason that Israel is in the shape that it is is not because God came down and punished them for no reason. It's that he allowed them to essentially become the victims of their own circumstances. He allowed them to become the victims of their own iniquity. It wasn't so much that God made this happen. It was more like Israel abandoned God, and because of that, God lifted his hand of protection away from them. After he repeatedly told them not to, after he repeatedly gave them chances to repent and change their ways, Israel still refused to do the right thing. And Daniel understands that. Daniel understands that this isn't what God wanted. And if God had his way about it, he would have rather they repented and, and been able to continue to protect them. But they didn't do that. And in this verse specifically, one of the things that I wanted to point to is he draws this contrast between God and Israel. He's saying, righteousness belongs to you, we have open shame. And then he describes the reasons for that. Why is it that God has righteousness and Israel is to be shamed? Because God kept his end of the bargain, Israel didn't. You see, in God's case, he made a covenant with Israel long ago, all the way back in the time of Moses, long before Daniel was even thought of. And he made this covenant with Israel. He says, I will be your God if you will be my people, if you will keep my precepts, if you will do what I tell you, if you will obey the law, then you're going to have a special relationship with me that no other country has. And because of that, you'll have certain privileges and protections. And if you'll just do that, if you'll just live by this covenant, then I'm going to be there protecting you. And Israel agreed but they didn't hold up their end of the bargain. So many times in the history of Israel, 
They fell away, they got involved in idol worship and all kinds of other horrible things. Sometimes even things as gruesome and evil as fornication and child sacrifice, I mean just devastatingly spirit, devastating spiritual things. Horrible sins. And despite this, they usually wound up straightening up, and then God came back and forgave them, and then the cycle repeated itself all over again. You see, here Daniel, he is drawing this contrast, partly because it's true, but also, and I think this is the reason that this prayer is recorded and written down, is so that he could help instruct Israel. And there's something for us to take away from this as well. He's telling Israel, if you're going to point the finger of blame, point it at yourself. You're the one that didn't uphold your end of the bargain. And you'll notice that it is the deeds of God, what God has done, that has earned him righteousness. He's one worthy of praise and worship. And contrast that with what we have. We have open shame. And the reason we have open shame is because we separated ourselves from God. So you see, what's happening is, the reason Daniel is drawing this distinction is because he's saying the reason that we are in the state that we're in is because we decided that we're going to be unlike God. Because if there's one thing that's true throughout the, the Bible, and the Bible emphasizes this, that to be good is to be God-like. And when Israel and its people stopped reflecting the values of God, when they stopped trying to be like God and live up to his ideals and to follow the righteousness that he offered— well, then they stop being the beneficiaries of his blessings as well. And so it's not that God moved or that God didn't keep his word. It's that Israel started pulling away from him little by little, and eventually they got to the point to where God wouldn't protect them anymore. And then open shame became theirs. All they would have to do to have the same kind of glory and honor and prestige amongst other nations that they once had under kings like David, is to obey God and do what he told them to. To be like God, to follow after that righteousness, and then that gap gets a lot closer and God starts protecting them again. You see, Israel's the one that left God. God is not the one that abandoned Israel. And Daniel understands that and is making that very clear, and he says, the shame belongs to us, O Lord. Our kings, our princes, and our fathers. You see the line of the chain of command here that Daniel is talking about? He's saying our kings, they disobeyed you. And because of that, they were put to open shame. And when the king disobeyed you, our princes also disobeyed you, the people that were directly under the king. And then our fathers disobeyed you. The people that were supposed to run the families of Israel the people that were supposed to keep their own families in line and teach them about the Torah and teach them about the laws of Moses and make sure that their family, even if everybody else around them was doing wrong, that they were acting right. Our fathers failed you. And the reason that this scares me is because I think America is in a pretty similar boat. Now, I get that we're not the chosen people of God and, and God doesn't have that special relationship with America like he does Israel, but I do think that we're going to be judged in a similar way. You see, our politicians, they've done some bad things. They've left the trying to be righteous and trying to be moral like God. And then some of our other elected officials, more at the local level, started doing the same thing. But what really put the last nail in the coffin, what really has moved us further away from God, is that our fathers are not doing their job, just like they did in Israel. Even if the kings and the princes were all corrupt, as long as the family unit was intact, as long as the fathers did what was right, they would at least have been saved from open shame. But Daniel is saying all of those fail-safes moved away from God and refused to do what he wanted to, and because of that, everybody, the entire nation was lost and were put to open shame. And if we're not careful, this country is going to suffer a very similar fate. Daniel knew it, and it's still true today. 
And so if we want to strengthen our nation and we want to turn our nation back towards God, we can't always control what the politicians do. We can't always control what our leaders and the influential people in our country can do. We can control what happens in our own household. We can control what fathers and brothers, we can control what our families do. And that's the most important role that we have to make sure that we're the ones following God. Stay the course, friends. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.